Walter Brennan, a significant figure in the 1930s, still garners media interest long after his death almost 50 years ago. Known for his Oscar win as Best Supporting Actor, Brennan is still beloved by Hollywood television audiences for his outstanding performances in movies. Yet behind his endearing grandfatherly character on screen, Brennan's personal life was overshadowed by controversy and scandals. His controversial perspectives and atrocious actions may challenge your perception of him. Keep watching to discover more about the star who brought the endearing characters to life on screen. Walter Brennan's Early Life Walter Brennan was born in Lynn, Massachusetts on July 25, 1894, to William John Brennan and Margaret Elizabeth Flanagan. He was the middle child of three siblings, with an older sister and a younger brother. Walter's childhood was spent in Swampscott, Massachusetts, surrounded by a working-class community. His father worked as a teamster, while his mother took care of the household. Brennan studied at Ringe Technical School in Cambridge, Massachusetts, before moving on to the Cambridge Latin School. Upon finishing his studies, he took on a range of roles, from working in a bank to a lumberjack and a factory worker. Back in 1917, he joined the United States Army and bravely served during World War I. Right after the war, his father's guidance and his insatiable curiosity propelled him into the world of engineering, laying the foundation for his future endeavors. Yet fate had a unique path in store for the young Brennan. Destiny led Brennan to a job as a bank clerk, but his path took a different turn when duty called during World War I. With unwavering courage and dedication, he joined the United States Army and assumed the position of a private in the 101st Field Artillery Regiment, bravely serving in the battlegrounds of France. Following World War I, Brennan shifted his focus to journalism and became a financial reporter for a leading newspaper in Boston. Yet, his adventure didn't end at that point. The 1920s held great promise and the allure of potential riches, drawing Brennan into the realm of real estate. He rode the wave of the flourishing market, accumulating a fortune that captured the essence of the era's economic success. However, the winds of fate can be unpredictable, and Brennan faced the stark truth of financial instability. In 1925, a challenging real estate downturn left him grappling with the loss of his hard work and wealth. After facing financial challenges and the repercussions of the 1925 real estate crash, Brennan stood at a pivotal moment, grappling with the stark truths of economic hardship. He explored fresh paths to reconstruct his life. Destiny guided him to the thriving realm of Hollywood, where he began a journey that would solidify his place in history. After working as a stockbroker in Boston, he made a bold decision to transition into the world of acting. Walter Brennan's career. Walter Brennan's journey in Hollywood traces back to the early 1920s, where he started with minor roles in silent films. He made his debut in the 1923 movie Lorraine of the Lions. He maintained a consistent presence in films during the 1920s and 1930s, frequently portraying supporting characters. In 1925, Brennan ventured into the film industry by landing roles as an extra at Universal Studios. Starting at $7.50 a day, the pay provided a much-needed lifeline for Brennan, who was struggling financially. Unbeknownst to him, stepping into the realm of cinema would kickstart a decade-long partnership with Universal Studios, shaping a crucial phase in his career. Back in 1932, Brennan inked a deal with Fox Film Corporation, a move that set the stage for his rise in Hollywood. With that said, he started to attract notice for his captivating performances in movies like Fury, 1936. Despite facing challenges early in his career, Brennan's exceptional skills and adaptability propelled him to become a cherished figure in Hollywood's character actor realm. Brennan's rise in Hollywood advanced significantly after landing a pivotal role in The Wedding Night, 1935, a film produced by the legendary Sam Goldwyn. Embarking on a cinematic journey, Brennan discovered himself co-starring with the iconic Gary Cooper for the second time, creating a memorable collaboration. Originally cast as an extra, Brennan's remarkable talent captured the filmmaker's interest, resulting in his role growing significantly throughout the filming process. This significant development marked a crucial moment for Brennan, 
as his exceptional portrayal in The Wedding Night not only captured interest, but also secured him a sought-after deal with Sam Goldwyn. With Sam Goldwyn's support, Brennan's film career expanded beyond the boundaries of just one studio. Goldwyn cleverly arranged for Brennan to work with other major studios, highlighting the actor's range in different projects. An exceptional project from this era was MGM's West Point of the Air, 1935, showcasing Brennan's unique charm on screen and enhancing his rising status in Hollywood. Brennan's artistic partnership with director James Whale persisted with the legendary Bride of Frankenstein, 1935. Within this captivating film, Brennan not only delivered a few lines, but also displayed his impressive physical abilities as a stunt performer, highlighting his commitment to his art. The sequel to the classic Frankenstein brought a new dimension to Brennan's already varied portfolio. He made a significant impact with a memorable role in Sam Goldwyn's Barbary Coast, a movie helmed by the respected Howard Hawks and an uncredited William Wyler. Brennan's participation in this production signified a pivotal moment in his career, offering him the chance to transition from supporting roles. Looking back on that time, Brennan later commented, that experience was crucial, emphasizing the impact of that opportunity on his path in Hollywood. After the triumph of Barbary Coast, Brennan went on to leave his imprint on the industry through a series of varied roles. 1936 marked a turning point in Brennan's career when he landed a prominent role in Three Godfathers as one of the key outlaws. It was a pivotal moment for Brennan, giving him the opportunity to display his versatility and talent as an actor. The movie not only strengthened his position in the industry, but also paved the way for a string of unforgettable portrayals. Reuniting with director William Wyler, Brennan took on a minor part in These Three, 1936. Moreover, he took on a more significant role in Walter Wanger's The Moon's Our Home, 1936, showcasing his talent for effortlessly moving between various genres and characters. One of the standout additions to Brennan's list of films in 1936 was Fury, helmed by the legendary Fritz Lang. Also in 1936, the film Come and Get It, directed by Howard Hawks and William Wyler, featured a standout performance by portraying Swan Bostrom, a character known for his unique and unforgettable voice. This particular role led to his inaugural Academy Award nomination in the category of Best Supporting Actor. In 1938, Brennan secured his initial Academy Award for Best Supporting Actor, portraying Peter Goodwin in the film Kentucky. In 1940, he clinched his second Academy Award for portraying Judge Roy Bean in The Westerner. He was also involved in various other films during the 1940s, such as Sergeant York, 1941, and To Have and Have Not, 1944. His successes solidified his position as one of the most skilled and esteemed actors in Hollywood. Brennan's presence graced the screens of the 1950s and 1960s, frequently showcasing his talent in westerns, and captivating character-driven dramas. He made appearances in various television shows, such as The Real McCoys, where he had a leading role from 1957 to 1963. Brennan began working on television, guest starring on episodes of Screen Director's Playhouse, Lux Video Theater, Schlitz Playhouse, Ethel Barrymore Theater, Cavalcade of America, and the Ford Television Theater. He appeared as himself as a musical judge in the 1953 to 1954 ABC series, Jukebox Jury. Brennan later said that he preferred television to films because there were no long layoffs between jobs. He continued to appear in movies such as Gunpoint. He also starred in a short film about Israel, Man on a Bus, and The Proud Ones. He played the old outlaw Joe in the 1956 episode Vengeance Canyon, of Dick Powell's Zane Grey Theater. Brennan appeared in films such as 1956's Glory, Come Next Spring, and Batjack's Goodbye. My Lady 1956 with 14-year-old Brandon DeWilde, with whom he recorded the stories of Mark Twain that same year. He appeared in The Way to the Gold 1957 and played Debbie Reynolds' grandfather in the romantic comedy Tammy and the Bachelor 1957. Brennan was given another lead role in God is My Partner, 1957, a low-budget film that became a surprise hit. In 1963, Brennan starred in the film How the West Was Won as Colonel Jeb Hawkins. 
This film achieved both critical acclaim and financial success, solidifying its place as a timeless classic in the Western genre. Back in 1964, Brennan took on the character of Walter Andrews, himself in the TV series The Tycoon. The series concluded after 32 episodes. In 1965, Brennan portrayed the character of Shafter in the film The Oscar in a supporting role. The movie received a mixed response from both critics and audiences. Back in 1966, Brennan portrayed Grandpa Amos McCoy in the TV series The Real McCoys, a show that aired for 224 episodes between 1957 and 1963. The show experienced a revival for a single season from 1965 to 1966, with Brennan returning to portray Grandpa Amos once again. Back in 1969, Brennan landed a recurring part in the TV series The Guns of Will Sonnet, portraying the role of Will Sonnet's grandfather. Spanning from 1967 to 1969, the series aired a total of 50 episodes. During the 1970s, Brennan remained active in the entertainment industry, taking on roles in both film and television. One notable project he was involved in was The Over the Hill Gang Rides Again, 1970. Brennan's final on-screen role was in the Western film Smoke in the Wind, directed by Joseph Kane in 1975. Brennan's flexibility, gradual venture into music. Walter Brennan showed flexibility as he made transition from film to television with The Real McCoys and was the subject of a Norman Rockwell painting that drew upon his unique roles in Western films. After achieving acclaim for The Real McCoys, Walter Brennan delved into the world of music, making a lasting impact with a series of remarkable recordings. One of the most beloved and timeless songs is Old Rivers, which tells the touching story of an elderly farmer and his mule. Unveiled as a single in 1962 by Liberty Records, the B-side showcased the monumental Ride of John H. Glenn. This musical project marked a significant achievement in Brennan's career, highlighting his diverse talents as both an actor and a recording artist. Old Rivers struck a chord with listeners and quickly rose up the charts, achieving a remarkable position on the U.S. Billboard chart. Brennan's age at the time of this achievement, 67 years old, added to its remarkable nature. His achievement made him the oldest person to ever have a top 40 hit, showcasing the enduring charm of his skills and the widespread impact of his narratives. Unfazed by traditional norms, Brennan persistently challenged stereotypes associated with age. At 68 years old, he made a triumphant return to the top 40 with a new musical achievement. November 17, 1962, marked the rise of Mama Sang a Song on the charts, cementing Brennan's reputation as a versatile entertainer. Aside from his music career, Brennan's post-Real McCoy period involved him lending his unique voice to an animated version of the shooting of Dan McGrew. In the late 1960s, Brennan was prominently featured in the TV movie The Over the Hill Gang, alongside Pat O'Brien. Following the success of this project, a sequel titled The Over the Hill Gang Rides Again, 1970, featured Brennan in a leading role alongside the iconic Fred Astaire. Brennan enhanced his television career by joining the second season of the CBS sitcom To Rome with Love, collaborating with John Forsyth. Although this marked Brennan's final television series as a regular cast member, his influence persisted through guest appearances on shows such as Alias Smith and Jones. At the same time, Brennan made his presence felt in television movies, taking on roles in projects like The Young Country, Two for the Money, and Home for the Holidays, Marriage and Reflection. Back in 1920, Brennan tied the knot with Ruth Caroline Wells, whom he had encountered during a performance in a nearby theater. They had children together, Arthur, Walter, and Ruth, creating a strong bond that lasted through Brennan's successful career. Then they all relocated to California to advance Brennan's acting career. Back in 1940, Brennan made a substantial and enduring investment in the 12,000-acre Lightning Creek Ranch, located 20 miles north of Joseph, Oregon. Transforming into more than just a getaway, this expansive land stood as a symbol of Brennan's deep connection with nature and a sanctuary from the pressures of his Hollywood life.
Brennan's dedication to the local community was exemplified through his involvement in the development of Joseph. He founded the Indian Lodge Motel, a cinema, and a diverse store, enriching the town's cultural and business environment. Surrounded by the allure of Hollywood, Brennan discovered peace in the raw charm of Lightning Creek Ranch. This spot evolved into a beloved sanctuary for him to rejuvenate in between acting gigs, holding on to a true bond with the peacefulness and calmness of country living. Despite his skyrocketing career, Brennan's heart stayed connected to the earth, embodying a rare harmony between the allure of Hollywood and the genuineness of rural America. During his later years, Brennan chose to spend most of his retirement at his ranch in Moore Park, located in Ventura County, California. As he entered the last phase of his life, he found solace in the serene embrace of the natural world, offering a tranquil setting for contemplation and rejuvenation. During this time, Brennan, a renowned figure in Hollywood, shifted his focus to ranching, embracing a more relaxed lifestyle and the tranquility of country living. Confirming the rumors, unveiling Walter Brennan's private life. Walter Brennan's personal beliefs and political views contributed depth and complexity to the complex fabric of his life. While Brennan identified as a Roman Catholic, he chose to keep his religious beliefs private. Back in 1964, he made a public declaration about his faith, stating, I'm too old not to be a religious fella. It appears we are losing something a lot of people made a lot of sacrifices for. It seems that we are on the verge of losing something that many individuals have worked hard and made significant sacrifices to achieve. The declaration alluded to his strengthening spiritual beliefs and the significance of upholding values amidst a world in flux. In that particular year, Brennan made a public appearance to address a separate issue when he spoke at Project Prayer, a gathering that took place at the Shrine Auditorium in Los Angeles. Anthony Isley hosted an event with the goal of gathering support for school prayer after Supreme Court rulings in 1962 and 1963 deemed mandatory prayer in public schools unconstitutional. According to the court's ruling, these practices were found to be in violation of the Establishment Clause of the First Amendment to the United States Constitution. Brennan's active involvement in the rally highlighted his deep concern regarding what he perceives as the decline of moral and religious values within society. Brennan's religious beliefs and support for prayer in schools portrayed his conservative values, but his political views became more contentious. As per his biographer Carl Rollison, Brennan strongly opposed communism and would often accuse individuals of being communists if they showed support for John Fitzgerald Kennedy. Rollison provided additional insight into Brennan's strong position, stating that Brennan thought the Watts riots could have been prevented if a machine gun had been used. Brennan's residence was said to have a bunker filled with weapons and food, showcasing his preparedness for a possible Soviet invasion. This highlights the prevalent anxieties and fears that characterize the Cold War period. One of the most disturbing revelations about Brennan's political beliefs was his alleged statements expressing approval of the killing of Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. and his celebration of the assassination of Robert Francis Kennedy. If proven true, these claims sharply contrast with Brennan's widely cherished reputation as a beloved character actor. Everett Greenbaum, a writer of 32 episodes of The Real McCoys, provided valuable insights into Brennan's character, portraying him as a bigot known for frequently making racist remarks. Reports indicate that he held conservative views and did not support civil rights or the anti-war movements during the 1960s. He was convinced that the movements were under the influence of communist forces from abroad and that activists in the United States were inadvertently furthering their agenda. During multiple interviews, Brennan consistently shared conspiratorial views and specific details. He also implied that the riots in Newark and Watts, as well as the protests in Birmingham, were instigated by external forces with anti-American motives, leading African Americans to feel provoked and angry. Additionally, he mentioned the presence of weapons resembling firearms, which was proposed as an effective method for managing the protests. Although he faced criticism for his views, they were not entirely unfounded. Many individuals on the political right were skeptical of these movements, suspecting them to be connected to a larger communist plot. Walter Brennan is recognized for leveraging his public persona to generate controversy, 
and promote divisive sentiments. Reports suggest that Walter leveraged his down-to-earth and countryside persona to connect with his audience, spreading his discriminatory and anti-civil rights ideologies. He was reportedly affiliated with the John Birch Society, a group notorious for advocating prejudiced and intolerant views while opposing communism. Even though he hails from New England and has never actually lived on a farm, he managed to cultivate a charming country boy persona that resonated well with rural communities. He utilized his platform to showcase his far-right beliefs by embodying contentious characters that resonated with his audience. The new revelations offer a deeper and more intricate insight into the individual beyond the well-known Hollywood persona. Walter Brennan's political ties and engagements were just as multifaceted and intricate as the roles he portrayed on screen. Identified as a dedicated conservative Republican, Brennan associated himself with the Motion Picture Alliance for the Preservation of American Ideals. This organization was established to address what they viewed as leftist influences within the entertainment sector. His affiliation demonstrated his strong dedication to conservative principles and his resistance against what he viewed as liberal or communist beliefs. During the 1964 United States presidential election, Brennan endorsed Barry Goldwater as his preferred candidate. Goldwater's strong stance against the Civil Rights Act of 1964 aligned well with Brennan's conservative beliefs. Brennan's political affiliations underwent a transformation over the years, revealing his sophisticated and unique perspectives. In 1968, the individual gave their endorsement to George Wallace for the presidency, as they perceived Richard Nixon to be too liberal within the Republican Party. Wallace, known for his strong beliefs in segregation and running as a third-party candidate, garnered backing from people who opposed what they saw as excessive federal involvement in civil rights laws. In 1972, Brennan's political trajectory shifted as he threw his support behind John Schmitz, a far-right candidate and fellow member of the John Birch Society, a group recognized for its staunch anti-communist and conservative ideologies. Brennan not only publicly supported Schmitz by endorsing him, but also took on the role of finance chairman and lent his voice to narrate advertisements in favor of Schmitz's campaign. The alliance showcased Brennan's support for candidates who endorsed extreme right-wing beliefs and echoed his worries about potential challenges to traditional conservative principles. Even with these endorsements, Brennan had connections with candidates across the political spectrum, not just limited to far-right candidates. During the 1966 California gubernatorial election and his 1970 re-election campaign, he showed his support for Ronald Reagan by endorsing him. Reagan, who would go on to serve as the 40th president of the United States, epitomized a mainstream conservative ideology that resonated with Brennan's political beliefs, health challenges, and legacy. Brennan faced various health challenges over the years, such as a fractured back, and persistent arthritis. Additionally, he faced struggles with alcoholism, leading to a deterioration in his health and multiple incidents on movie locations. Despite facing obstacles, Brennan stayed committed to his passion and persevered in his professional journey. Walter Brennan kicked the bucket on September 21, 1974, at the age of 80. The events leading to his passing were heartbreaking, as he tumbled down a staircase at his residence in Oxnard, California. His fatal end was a result of the serious head injuries sustained from the fall. He was in the midst of a struggle with emphysema. Even in the face of adversity, Brennan's legacy stood strong, a true reflection of his lasting influence on the entertainment industry. Brennan's final resting place was at the San Fernando Mission Cemetery in Los Angeles, as he desired. The last tribute paid homage to a man who had experienced the glitz of Hollywood and the peace of the countryside, making a lasting impact on both worlds. Brennan was recognized for his rugged characters in movies such as Rio Bravo and Red River, yet behind the scenes, he exuded a gentle and compassionate demeanor. His passing was a profound loss to those who held him dear, leaving a lasting impact on all who were fortunate enough to have known him. Brennan's passing elicited a wave of sorrow from both fans and the entertainment world. His co-stars and friends shared their heartfelt condolences with his family, expressing their deep sadness. John Wayne, 
A close friend and frequent co-star of Brennan once stated, Walter Brennan was not only a great actor but also a remarkable human being. His absence will be deeply felt by those who were acquainted with him. For many years, film historians and critics have consistently recognized Brennan as one of the most exceptional character actors in the history of motion pictures. His repertoire of roles was quite varied, but he is perhaps most fondly recalled for his memorable performances in Western movies like portraying Judge Roy Bean in The Westerner, trailhand Nadine Groot in Red River, and Deputy Stumpy in Rio Bravo. He holds the prestigious title of being the first actor to ever win three Academy Awards, a remarkable achievement that still stands unmatched to this day. Additionally, he is the sole recipient of the Best Supporting Actor Award on three separate occasions, yet he still felt a sense of unease regarding his award victories. During the early days of the Academy Awards, extras were allowed to participate in the voting process, and Brennan had garnered significant support from the extras union. After his third victory, the union was removed from participating in Oscar voting. After this alteration, Brennan missed out on his fourth Best Supporting Actor nomination in 1941 for his role in Sergeant York. The award was ultimately won by Donald Crisp for How Green Was My Valley. Throughout his illustrious career, Brennan portrayed over 230 characters in a variety of film and television productions, showcasing his talent over a span of almost 50 years. He has been honored with a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame for his significant contributions to the film industry. You can find his star located at 6501 Hollywood Boulevard. Back in 1970, he received the prestigious honor of being inducted into the Hall of Great Western Performers at the National Cowboy and Western Heritage Museum in Oklahoma City. To this day, his photograph is displayed prominently in the museum, commemorating his contribution to the Western genre. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.